a direct from labs. Put that cookie down now. Oh. Oh, hi. Sorry. I didn't see you there. Huh. I was just watching my favorite Christmas movie, uh, Jingle All the Way. Pardon me. Ha <laughs> ha. What a wonderful time of year. The only time that I can actually watch this movie without being uh, ridiculed. One of my time-honored traditions uh, in my household growing up of watching Arnold Schwarzenegger dress up as a fictional superhero and fighting Sinbad. Like, I don't know what more you could want in a movie that celebrates the holidays. I don't understand where you could go wrong with that. Uh, it's honestly one of my all-time favorite movies. It's great. I remember growing up and of course when you're a kid and you just see someone in a superhero costume and you're running through the living room at this point in my life, I probably had, I would say a Game Boy in my hand. That seems reasonable. The OG one, the gray and purple one. Um, I was probably playing Kirby or something, who knows? and you just see a subtle glance on the TV and it's... I don't know who Arnold Schwarzenegger is at this point, but I definitely know that there's a cool superhero guy who's flying around at the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, perhaps? I don't know what that parade was, but the budget was astronomical. I just remember seeing it all the time, like every holiday season, either my parents had it on or whoever's like family member's house we were at, they would have it on TV. Typically around this time of year, throw it on for background noise, but honestly, it's one of my all time favorites uh, to just kind of reminisce on olden days when it was a simpler time, a time where Arnold Schwarzenegger could jetpack through the skies and shoot uh, boomerangs from his, uh, fist or his wrist and just you know go it's turbo times that's just one of my favorite movies i'm so glad i got to share that with you guys if that was one of your favorites of course please let me know because i'll talk about that movie all day and i'll always reference you know a put that cookie down no but i hope that you all have a wonderful holiday uh to you and yours and uh thanks for stopping by bye <laughs> Hello, Megan again. I'm going to be talking about my favorite Christmas movie. Uh, my favorite Christmas movie, like hands down by a landslide, is A Muppet Christmas Carol. It is just purely magical. I like first saw that movie when I was really young. We had a VHS of it. I would watch it like outside of Christmas. It's kind of spooky, but kind of also just, you know, wonderful and whimsical. Uh, but A Muppet Christmas Carol, is, you know, it's a Christmas Carol, but it has some really great musical numbers. Obviously, key characters are played by Muppets. However, Ebenezer Scrooge is played by Michael Caine, such a classic, wonderful actor in this Muppet movie, and it really, like, has so much heart. Like, I know that we're watching a movie where there's a bunch of puppets dancing around and stuff, but, like, I have definitely cried watching that movie. <laughs> like, I've always been, like, really drawn to, like, animatronics and puppets and any kind of, like, practical effect type stuff. And I think, like, Muppets are magical. They're, like, literal whole beings that I feel like live and exist outside of the movies. Like, you can't not I don't know, have feelings for them and care about them. All the ghosts are so cool. So um, the, I, I don't know like the exact names in the real story, but like in A Muppet Christmas Carol, that's how much I watch this movie. It's the only way I actually know the Christmas Carol story. Past partners who died of Ebenezer Scrooge are Marley and Marley in this movie, and they're played by the two old dudes in the balcony. The puppets that they made specifically for this movie that were like the ghosts of Christmas present, past, and like future, were so cool. The ghost of Christmas past is this like really spooky ethereal little ghost girl and they actually like filmed her in water so it looks like she's like floating and stuff. That's so cool. It looks amazing. It's still like creepy and beautiful today. Uh, and then the present was this like gigantic j jolly huge man and he ages over the course of their like time together and it's uh, it's just so wonderful like i don't know he's he's just like this happy presence that you're like oh this part of the movie makes me feel so good and then christmas future comes in and he's just like a ring wraith and he's he's freaking terrifying and uh you should you know maybe i bleach a little bit afterwards but the end of the movie is so pleasant that you don't need to so you'll be fine uh, my favorite thing about the movie is that charles dickens is played by gonzo Gonzo's the best Muppet if you don't if you don't see that. <laughs>
okay. But uh, he he and Rizzo go around and kind of like narrate the story as it's going on. And they break the fourth wall and it's just like, oh, it's just magic, it's just pure magic. I think they're actually releasing some kind of special edition this year, uh, which they put back a musical number that had been like, previously lost from the VHS to like the DVD release to now this new one they found that song again and it's like a really good song it's like super emotional um so I'm so excited about that I hope to like you know pick that one up I think it rates up there with like those really classic animated Christmas movies and it should definitely watch aside those um but yeah go check out that movie if you haven't seen it it's wonderful love it all right bye Now I get to talk about the greatest movie in existence! Alright. So we get to talk about our favorite Christmas movie. Growing up, I didn't really have a favorite Christmas movie, and I racked my brain of what Christmas movie could I even talk about that was good. Well, I found a Christmas shark movie, and it is called Santa Jaws. The premise of Santa Jaws is there's this kid who is drawing a comic about a shark that eats a bad Santa and takes on the Santa's soul. And he's writing it in a comic book shop, which is so great. He's like, oh, I relate. Uh, his grandfather gives him a magical pen for on Christmas Eve. And he's having these arguments with his family because they're not understanding his art and his, his passion and he ends up getting grounded and so he ends up taking this magical pen from his grandfather and he ends up drawing out the shark santa jaws and as he's drawing it he says i wish my family wasn't around anymore well as he does that santa jaws becomes real and it goes on a rampage killing every single one of his family members and as the movie progresses more and more are dying and eventually they figure out they need to get the comic and they need to get the pen and they need to finish the ending of the story. And eventually sitting trying to figure out how to kill this shark with the pen and they, they draw a sharp uh, candy cane that's broken on both ends so it's sharp and it impales the shark right in the middle of its head in the forehead. So then it becomes a, a giant horn or like a unicorn. However you want to see it, honestly, I would consider it a unicorn because it was glorious. And, you know, it doesn't kill the shark, it just now is part of the shark. It becomes a part of him. Or her. The whole premise is it's her, too. She just continues to go on a rampage through the whole movie. They even, like, realize that they can only kill it with Christmas things. So, like, Christmas ornament bombs and garland, like, with arrows. And they even take Christmas turkey and put gunpowder in it and then try to shoot it and shoot the shark. You get to the end and every single one of his family members has died but his mom. And they have an argument over the pen and she tells him it's not real. She throws the pen and he's like, that's the last thing I had from my grandfather. How like, you know, making it all super sad. She goes and picks it up and apologizes. But during that apology, Santa Jaws comes out of the water and gets her too, and then that's when he decides, go ahead and write the ending of the story right then and there, as his mom's being eaten by Santa Jaws next to him. He wishes for his family back, and he finishes the story, and he closes the book, and he lights the comic on fire, and a green fire comes up, and the Santa Jaws goes up in green flames, and he wakes up at the end of the movie, at home in his bed it's christmas day and nothing ever they don't know any of it ever happened and at the end he ended up burning the comic but this is where i think there's gonna be a santa jaws 2 coming soon he keeps the pen he doesn't throw the pen away he doesn't light the pen on fire he only lit the comic on fire so he still has that magical pen so santa jaws 2 i'm looking out for you it's time it's time for a second one. I'm, I'm expecting it in 2021 or 2022. Go watch it. It was great. It had a lot of good things. There's even like a YouTube video of kill counts for Santa Jaws. I was so surprised. It was awesome. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Bye. The other movie that I like, and uh, probably I feel like a chunk of people probably don't even know it and remember it, but I remember it because 
I don't know. I just like movies where kids are jerks. It's a uh, Dutch. It stars Ed O'Neill. His name's Dutch, by the way. That's why it's a movie's day. He is dating this woman, and he wants to propose this woman. So he wants to he wants to make sure that the holidays go great with her. And so he offers to pick up her son from this like rich kids boarding school. Uh, the kid's father is this like really rich guy and wanted his son to go to the school. But because of that, the kid's also like this little like snobby little brat. And it's essentially just a movie about a road trip between Ed O'Neill's character who's dating this kid's mom and this kid who is just a jerk and really mad that some poor dude is dating, or not really poor, but gener average working man uh, who is actually kind of successful in the movie. He actually like owns his own business in the movie, if I remember correctly. But it's basically them just butting heads with each other and just crazy stuff happens. Like a whole bag of fireworks gets set off outside and it like sets Ed O'Neill's character's like coat on fire. They like lose their car. They end up having to sleep in like a homeless shelter. It's like around that time where like you actually start getting like, you know, you start getting like the values of the movie, what the movie's trying to teach you. The kid's making Ed O'Neill's life like just awful in, in the same time the kids actually starting to learn to appreciate the life of a working person and those who are less fortunate than himself probably the best thing about the movie though is when you get to the very end ed o'neill promises this kid that he's going to get him back for something that he did and so <laughs> the very end of the movie he, he shoots the kid in the butt with a bb gun for some reason when i was a kid i thought that was the funniest thing ever it's a great movie you should check it out especially if you want to laugh i'm actually really excited to see what everybody else uh, has to say uh especially steve I mean, he talks about my favorite y'all take care uh happy holidays and uh thank you everybody for uh watching and thank you everybody for being uh patrons of atlantis we wouldn't be able to do all this stuff without y'all making funny videos about our favorite things and uh or even just have jobs so we appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. And we hope to uh, do a lot more for you in 2021. Bye.